We all agreed that was actually too easy of a question, Jalen. It was. He, he, he also interviewed for the job this year, Mike Woodson. That's correct. So then we just had some fun. We started jotting down the names. If we could name all 10 of them. So here are the names that we have. D'Antoni, Woodson, Nelson, Herb Williams, Isaiah Thomas, Hornacek, Fisher, Rambis. You're forgetting the one I played for in New York, Larry Brown. Larry Brown, that's right. We're still missing still one. Still missing one. We're still missing one. Who is, Humbo, who's the one that we're missing? Don Chaney and Lenny Wilkins. Wow. So we were missing two. Hall of Famer. I mean, they've just had everybody coach That's that team. Game, All right, what a right? mess. Anyway, Fizz will be with us coming up shortly. Let's get to the, uh, some football here, guys, because this, I think, is very interesting. The Giants had every player in the draft available to them except Baker Mayfield. It's the Rock. And they took Saquon Barkley out of Penn State, passing on drafting Eli Manning's eventual replacement. But former Giant quarterback Phil Simms, before Eli, the greatest quarterback they ever had, was asked about the decision and said, they've made it abundantly clear from the word go, as soon as this past season ended, what they're going to try to do. Keep the team together, fix it up a little, let Eli be the quarterback, and try to win it this year. This is not we drafted Saquon to win and get in the playoffs in three years. It's about this year. They put a lot of pressure on themselves. I understand what they're doing. Now, you can look, sit back and say to yourself, they had the second pick in the draft. They were terrible last year. How can they be in win-now mode? I actually agree. I think it's actually right. They had a, a plethora of injuries last year, including Odell. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. I actually do think they're trying to catch lightning in a bottle, which is very hard to do in the NFL, but it's not impossible. I sort of agree with what do they're doing. Do you think, and this is sort of a situation that a few teams have found themselves in, as far as forsaking the future for the present and trying to go for it now, do you think this is something that, with the quarterback class that just came through, that they will regret? It's going to depend a lot on how good some of those quarterbacks turn out to be, including Sam Darnold, who'll be playing in their own town eventually. But I do not think you regret it. The value of one championship is like, to me, is like infinity. So if, if they win one championship with this, then it was not a mistake. That's how I look at it. Even if one of the quarterbacks they pass on would have wound up being a great player there for a decade, if you win one championship by keeping this together with Eli and Saquon, yes. then in my opinion, you cannot say it was a mistake. The Giants have had a terrific, amazing, wonderful offseason. Just think about it like this. They're going to bring back Eli like you just mentioned. You have to have a football team around him to protect him, like being a rookie in so many aspects the, um, of Darnold with the Jets. So how do you do that? You bring him a left tackle. They did that. You get Odell back. In a contract year, he's going to be hungry. You already have Sterling Shepard. You already have Ingram. What were they missing? A running game. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you have the best running back in the draft on your squad at your disposal who can also catch out of the backfield, can also play special teams, and now the Giants' defense is going to resemble more of what it looked like two years ago as opposed to last year because the offense won't be so bad and getting off the field so fast that they're going to be a lot more productive. I think you're 100% right. I really do. That doesn't mean it's going to work, but I understand the logic behind it. And you're taking one more shot with Eli. And if you see the level at which some quarterbacks are playing older than he is, including his brother Peyton, then I, I think it actually is a reasonable roll of the dice. So I actually agree with what Phil Sims, uh, Phil Sims is saying. Now, there's also been a lot of drama in New England over the past year. Remember the reports of the fallout between Belichick and Kraft and Brady and then Brady and Gronk skipping voluntary workouts and then Brady jokingly pleading the fifth when asked if he feels appreciated by the organization. It's been very unpatriot-like how many headlines there have been around that team. So someone asked the question to Bill Parcells, and I really like My his God. response. He's, he's, to me, I, there's no one I'd rather hear from than him, and this is from The Athletic. He said, having been in a position myself as a head coach, a lot of things are said about an organization, the coaching staff, and the owner. Some of the things are just flat out not true, yet they get out or they get publicized because they make good headlines. The only thing you got to do is watch the product on the field. When the season starts, all this off-season stuff, it doesn't mean anything, nothing. I agree to a large extent. I don't think this stuff hasn't ever been going on in New England. I just think they've done a very good job of keeping it all in-house, and now all of a sudden it's out there. But, Jalen, you played and you've lived your life in locker rooms for a long time. When all this mess is out there, does it actually affect a team's ability to win? When you're not good, yes. Because here's what ends up happening. Bad teams, when somebody makes a mistake, they point fingers and they start to argue with one another. When you've had the level of success of the Spurs or of the Patriots and you make a mistake, oh, my bad, you own it. 
And so for these headlines to be out there, it's something for us to consume. But once they start playing football, just like Bill Parcet said, all of the great teams, the great players, what do they always talk about? Blocking out the noise. And for young people, I want them to pay attention to something. Every time, it's time, every time somebody that's famous seems to get ready to get focused and get ready to get disciplined, the first thing they say they do is, I'm not on social media. And the reason why they do that, because you're not taking in all of the noise. And so the Patriots have done a better job almost of any team over the last couple of decades of staying the course, focusing on the next play. I think this goes for any industry anywhere on planet Earth. Winning, being successful hides the ugly until it doesn't. I mean, it, they can all hate each other and be scratching each other's eyes out, but as long as they're coming out winning and getting to a Super Bowl, we don't care. The second that that stops happening, all of that comes out. How many times do people, Matt Harvey leaves town, all the anonymous people come out and start giving you stories and details and this and this and this. Why? Because it was a dysfunctional situation. If he would had been killing it, no one cared. You know, I actually think that the best analogy to this is Jordan and Phil Jackson and Jerry Krause in Chicago. And I know I'm going back a generation here, but people who remember those legendary Bulls teams will remember. That there was enormous discord and disharmony, and it was out. Everybody knew it. Everybody knew the players hated Jerry Krause, and Phil Jackson was sort of the buffer between them. But it didn't stop them from winning. It didn't stop them at all. They won the championship basically every year to the point that Jerry Krause himself is now in the Hall of Fame. So you're right. When you're winning, this stuff doesn't make any difference. And I don't think that was ever actually a distraction to them at all. And what helps you win is having the best players. And when we start talking about greatest quarterbacks of all time, you're not going to go far without mentioning Tom Brady, and they still have him. That's exactly right, even at the age of 41, which he will be when the season begins. Meanwhile, on planet Earth, Tim, what do you think of this? Pelicans coach Alvin Gentry ended his post-game presser yesterday in the best way possible. Give a listen. What is it? One, two, three, Cancun. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's... Uh-huh, that's classic. Perfect, actually. And for those that don't know, Nick Van Exel, <laughs> allegedly, that's my guy, said that at one point <laughs> when the Lakers were in the playoffs and they were down, I think, 3-0 to a team, and you know how you put it in, normally you say defense or hard work or something that galvanizes the troops. He allegedly <laughs> said, one, two, three, Cancun. <laughs> because that's what people go in the offseason. Do they still, though? I feel like they're going everywhere It's more like a high school trip. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the place to go anymore. That would you go on your senior trip? I didn't take a senior trip. Were you? Neither did I. That, that would make, <laughs> I was just thinking, that would make a great bit somewhere. It's like, what are the worst things you could say after one, two, three? Like, one, two, three, what? What would be the worst thing you can possibly oh, say? I have some good ones. One, two, three, tank. Like, I, I want to hear what the players on the teams that are tanking are saying at that point. Well, Let the ownership encourage them. One, first, two, three, no first defense. First, I got to know some family members' <laughs> names, and then I can go from there. One, two, three, guard no one. No. Nope. Uh, all right, we got the Sports Center promo going. here. We got Sports Center tonight, 6 o'clock Eastern, right after PTI. It's going to be a great show. They got all kinds of things going on, including preview of the Sixers and Ben Simmons trying to make the miraculous comeback. Mm -hmm. Game five is tonight. You got Red Sox and Yankees. Game two of that series. And don't forget the game is on ESPN tonight as well. And then it's Tiger and Phil together at the Players. All that and more tonight, 6 Eastern on SportsCenter ESPN. Coming up here, that man, David Fisdale, is the man in New York now. We're going to ask him about the Knicks. We'll also ask him how he would handle a player who refused to go into a game. <laughs> All that and a whole lot more. Thank you for getting up with us on ESPN.